Hello, my name is Jiří Šimonek and I'm from the company CFD Support and I would like to show you how to set up and run a CFD simulation in the Turbo Machinery CFD software. There is an outline of this presentation. At first I will show you how to set up a CFD simulation. The next step will be running the simulation including computational mesh generation. And the last point which I'm going to show you is an automatic evaluation of results. And what we need to start? The, the first thing we need is a CAD model of the machine we would like to simulate. Or, of course, it's possible to import an existing computational mesh. But I will show you how to start from scratch with just a CAD model in an STL format. Because Turbo Machinery CFD reads models in STL format. To start Turbo Machinery CFD software, just double click on the CFD icon on your desktop or write TCFD, all capitals, to the terminal and press enter. And the TCFD graphical user interface appears. Let's start step by step setting up the case. There is a file name entry with the case setup file. Because we would like to set the radial pump from scratch, we will not load any setup file, but we will create a new one. So click on save and the save dialog window appears. Now type the name of the new file, for example pump-test-1 and click OK. And the case setup file is saved with an extension .tcfd. And the last thing we shall set at this place is the appropriate machine type. So please select the pump from this drop-down menu. Whenever you would like to apply the changes you have made, click on this Apply button. Let's move now on simulation setup. Our simulation will be steady state. I can run it just on four cores instead of six because my computer have just four. Numerical order. Here we can choose whether we would like to use first order discretization schemes or the second order. Let's keep first order for simplicity. Convergence check. Can automatically stop the simulation when the convergence criteria are met during the simulation. Just one useful note. All the fields in the many have their own hints. Just stay for some time with the mouse pointer on the field you would like to get the hint and it will appear in a moment. So the next step is the setup of physics. The gravity can be set here and the fluid properties. There are predefined water and air or you can choose custom and define your own fluid properties. The reference pressure and the reference temperature can be set here and the cavitation risk evaluation can be enabled. Let's move on components, which is the most important part of the case setup. Because here comes the CAD model and the topology of the case. I have to change the scale factor units from meters to millimeters. Because my model is generated in millimeters and TCFD needs to convert it into meters for the CFD simulation. There's the origin of the axis of rotation of the impeller and the axis of rotation, which is Z in our case. So no need to change anything at this place. You can divide your model into several components. In this case, there will be three of them. The inlet pipe, the impeller and the volute part. So let's start setting the number of components to 3. You can see that we have a three tabs now. The component 1, component 2 and component 3. For each component we have to load the directory where we store their STLs. So let's do that for component 1. We have to load the geometry of the component 1. So it means we have to set a path to our STLs. So click on this button and the open dialog window appears. My STLs are in the directory STL. 
I have split all STLs into directories which belongs to components. In directory inlet pipe, I have just STLs that belongs to the inlet pipe component. So I will select the whole directory inlet pipe and I will click OK. Here we can set the component name, for example, inlet pipe. Number of periodic segments is one because this is a full geometry, not just a periodic segment. So now we have to set types of boundary conditions of the inlet pipe. To do so, double click on its type and select inlet for inlet pipe inlet. The same for inlet pipe outlet. Select outlet interface type because there will be an interface between the inlet pipe and the impeller. And now we have to pair the outlet of the inlet pipe with an inlet of the impeller. To set it, click on it with right mouse button and select the component 2 which will be the impeller. And finally set a wall for the inlet pipe wall. Now we can click apply and we can display the components. This is the first component, this is the inlet pipe inlet, inlet pipe wall and here's the inlet pipe outlet. The next very important parameter that has to be set properly is the background mesh size. It's a maximum size of the cell in the computational mesh. It is in the same dimensions as the geometry in STL. So it means ours is in millimeters. So let's set it as a 10 millimeters in each direction. And the second very important parameter is an internal point which determines where the computational mesh will be generated, whether inside or outside the geometry. Of course, it shall be inside the inlet pipe. And such point is, for example, 0, 0 and minus 115 millimeters. And now let's click apply and let's move to the second component. So switch to the second component and let's do the same. At first we have to load the directory with our STLs. So let's load the whole impeller directory. Click OK to load it. Fill the component name, for example impeller. Number of periodic segments will be 1 because it's a full wheel configuration. And now select the patches the boundaries. Impeller blades would be the blade and it will be the rotating boundary. Impeller hub set it as hub and it will be rotating as well. Impeller inlet will be the inlet interface that has to be paired with the inlet pipe, so right mouse button click on its name and select the component 1 to pair it with the inlet pipe component. Impeller outlet will be the outlet interface and let's pair it with component 3 and it will be a mixing plane interface. So we have to set the number of mixing plane stripes, the number of divisions, so double click on this field and set it to 5 stripes. The 5 will be fine in this case. And the last patch, impeller shroud, we can set it as a shroud and it will be rotating as well in this simulation. And now click apply and the impeller geometry appears here. So let's go farther and set the background mesh size to the same values as the inlet pipe component so it means to 10, 10 and 10 millimeters in each direction. So and the internal point for the impeller 
will be for example 50, 80 and 60 millimeters and mark the component as a rotating here. So that's it and we can move on to the component 3. So at first load the STL directory with the STLs of volute. Click OK, set the component name for example to volute number of periodic segments is 1, it's a full geometry and now let's set the boundary types so volute inlet will be the inlet interface that has to be paired with the component 2 the volute outlet will be the general outlet volute RSI connection and volute wall they both are walls So let's click apply now to activate the geometry which looks like this and let's go and set the background mesh size which would be 10 in each direction as for other two components and the internal point for volute could be for example 50, 200 and 60 millimeters. What is really useful to know there is such a graph with the components and so there is the inlet which goes to the inlet pipe there is the inlet pipe outlet which goes to the impeller which is the rotating component and the outlet of the impeller goes to the inlet of the volute and the volute outlet is the general outlet of the whole case. You can double click on this graph and it will appear in a standalone window in which you can check whether your setup is correct or not. The setup is correct, like a formally correct, when there are solid arrows between the components. Once they are dashed, there is something missing. There is missing one side of interconnection and you have to check whether you have correctly defined or pair the interfaces that should be paired together. So and now we can continue with the speed lines setup. Here you can choose how many different speed lines, it means rounds per minute, would you like to simulate and how many points, for example, different flow rates for each speed line you would like to simulate. I will set just one rotation speed, so just one speed line and the rotation speed would be for example 1800 rounds per minute. So and let's set five speed line points for the speed line and let's keep the 500 iterations for each point. So and let's move to the next step which will be the turbulence setup. Here you can choose the turbulence model there are four options, Laminar, K-Omega SST, K-Epsilon and Spalar Almaras. I like K-Omega SST, it works really very well in most of the turbo machinery cases. You can use this rough walls condition, but it's not necessary at the moment. And now it's time to move to inlet boundary conditions setup. Set inlet boundary condition as volumetric flow rate and we will set five volumetric flow rates. So the first one would be 0 0.18 cubic meters per second, 0 0.17 cubic meters per second, 0 0.16, 0 0.15 and the lowest would be 0 0.14.
so it means 140 liters. So you can change liters per second or cubic meters per second and set the appropriate values there. The turbulent quantities are fine as set by default and we can move to the outlet boundary conditions. Leave here the fixed pressure boundary condition and also leave the zeros everywhere for all the points because our simulation is set as incompressible so we can count just with pressure difference and not with the exact pressure values. It is usual to use zero pressure at the outlet when the simulation is incompressible. That's the reason why we set the zeros there. So let's go for the next step, which are initial conditions. The type of initial conditions could be manual or mapped. Mapped means we can map the data from the previously calculated cases and manual means the constant values which we will write into this table. So except pressure that should be initialized as zero because we are using the zero boundary condition at the outlet, we can leave the rest as it is because it's fine for our simulation. And now we can finish with a case setup, click apply, click save the data to the TCFD file, click on settings here, and now you can click on this icon which is the TCFD manager and by clicking on it, it will be open. The TCFD manager is for running and controlling the simulation. Click apply to activate it. Enter the directory name here, for example, pump-test1. Click apply and click write case. So the case is written to the disk to the directory pump test one and now we have several options how to continue. We can click on run all to run the whole CFD process at once. So it means like the meshing, running the simulation and automatic results evaluation. Or we can go step by step. Create mesh, run calculation, and generation of the report. So let's click on run all for now to run the whole CFD process at once. So it means the automatic mesh generation, running the CFD simulation and the automatic evaluation of the results. So you can see that the TCFD manager starts with the mesh generation and here you can watch the progress of the meshing. Now the mesh is generated and the TCFD manager starts the calculation. Here we can watch in which iteration we are currently and estimated time in which the simulation is going to be finished. The simulation finished successfully. Everything is done now. The report is generated. You can watch it here or of course you can open the results, the flow fields which you can watch in this 3D window. So that's all from this video. Thank you for watching and feel free to contact us if you have any further questions.